Okay, now we're ready to melt some goats. We have a strip cut ready. I don't use a screen to cut with a little mesh to observe the milk uh, because if it, you can see if it's bad, it's really bad. So our does are tested every month for somatic cell count and we have never had a case of acute mastitis because we get on it really quickly. Our clusters are in place. We have set them, changed the setting from the clean, where this green portion is locked up over this little protrusion, to where it will move up and down. Now these operate by simply the outside part slides easily, and any back pressure on this surface causes the chamber below to open up, and the milk can flow through. When you pull gently down on this, the resistance of the teeth causes this to close the chamber and it turns off. So you'll see how they work. We have our udder wash over here. Teat dip ready. I use a hydrogen peroxide based teat dip and a cup that fills at the top and then the unused portion stays up there. It's enough usually to dip about four goats and then nothing goes back down in here. So you don't have to worry about it contaminating. We have our little Dawn dish detergent udder wash that we're just gonna pre-wash everybody's udder with, strip them, and get them going. All right, and we get some goats. Okay, in this group of goats, we have two of our Ligerians, which are half La Mancha and half Nigerian, and one purebred La Mancha. These inflations are the Nigerian dwarf sheep size, but they work well on all these teats. Uh, some really large goats, they might not. So we milk once a day for most of the year. Uh, this dough here has been in milk, the La Mancha has been in milk for a year and a half, and it's still producing extremely well. You can see her udder there. We are on dairy herd improvement, so we do have a milk test every month. On once a day milking, you can continue on uh, regular uh, official dairy uh, milk test by having your first milking be zero on the weight, and the second milking is when the sample is always taken. So the first thing I do is clean the udder really quickly and thoroughly with this washcloth, the microfiber washcloth dipped in run out really dry in the uh, Dawn dish detergent solution. By doing a quick clean, I'm getting rid of all sorts of dust, debris, molds, yeast, and starting to stimulate the letdown. Then I'll take three squirts from each teat to flush out most of the bacteria that's accumulated in there during the night, or in the 24 hours, I should say. Now this Lamancha dough has tight openings in her teeth. The orifice is tight. So she milks out more slowly than the others. It's, she gets a lot of milk, but she's also milking out slowly. And then it's important that the teat dip cover the entire area where the inflation might. So you want to have good lighting so that you can observe that. And then that teat dip should sit on there for 30 seconds. So during that time, I'll prep the next goat, or two. I have it, the milk stand is set to take four Nigerian size, but with this big girl block in the way here, I only bring up three. Now this dough has a very plump teats that aren't placed well, but she milks out incredibly well and fast. This is Itchy, Prudence, and Lawanda. And I'll clean my hands with a sanitizing cloth that I have in my little pockets here, and dry off the first dough I'm gonna hook up.
work on dairy herd improvement where your milk is being, each dough is being tested for somatic cell count every month, you should do a some sort of somatic cell count on farm test. My favorite is California mastitis test, also called CMT. I advise everybody to do that once a month on every animal, whether it's a cow or a goat or a sheep. If you are on dairy herd improvement and the somatic cell count come back at all elevated, you should then go right out to the barn on the next milking and check that animal. If one side of her udder is more elevated than the other, you know there's a problem. That's how you can avoid ever having chronic, excuse me, acute mastitis, is by finding it while it's just in its baby stages. Our first dose milk out here, and I have it on this next one. This gal's still going, mostly because of those tight orifices having her take a long time. And I don't know if you can see, but she's going to milk out a little unevenly here. So I'll be ready to take one of them off as soon as it gets empty. You don't want a slurping sound to happen on the teeth. That means there's vacuum fluctuations, which is bad for the udder. So the one side is empty, just a little downward pressure. So the downward pressure closes this chamber and takes the vacuum off. And you want to hold this at an angle so that any debris from above can't fall in. But you don't want to tip it upside down because you don't want milk up in that area. The teeth should finish out dry without milk on it, except for the very tip. A dry feet is going to be a cleaner, healthier teeth. Okay, so now we have a group of our lovely Nigerian dwarfs. We're milking 20 of these, 8 Ligerians, and 2 La Manchas. And like I said, some of them have been milking for about a year and a half now, so varying degrees of production. All of these freshened this year. We like to keep our goats with, with what's called a dairy clip, where you clip their udder and the hair around there. Um, this one needs it, this one needs it. Uh, like anything on a farm, you're always behind on most things. But So I've also changed our wash water now so that we have a nice clean pail of that. The stove here at the end is the oldest stove in the group and one of our very best milkers. Even on once a day milking, she uh, keeps her production almost the same. All of our first fresheners last year were able to get their milking stars or advanced registry milking stars on once a day milking. So that's one thing that we're really trying hard to breed for here at Philea Farm is a Nigerian dwarf that acts like a dairy goat. So I've taken the squirts out there, dipping, make sure I'm covering that entire teat. The big teats are a lot easier to cover. The small teats, sometimes you have to overfill this reservoir. And I'll wash the next two. This doe here has small teats, but she milks up very quickly and is a great little milker. And this doe at the end, the white doe, this is Define Coco Love Shack, whose tattoo is B52 for anybody who knows that group, and um, Penelope. This doe here at the end has a large udder, but the udder shape isn't ideal, and there's a pocket in the back. So she's a little difficult to milk out on the machine. You have to kind of reposition her udder while she's milking. Oops, did that one already, silly. Dip these last two. When I'm uh, not doing the video, this whole process to milk all 30 takes me an hour. I like to be very efficient and quick and not waste time where you don't need to waste time. Dry up the first two. So this is the second freshening dough, meaning she's had a freshen twice. And this dough, I don't remember, Penelope, she's uh, milked through many times, so milked for two years in a row for several lactations. So the shorter doughs, that's what these are designed for, which is fantastic. I have tried almost every cluster inflation setup they make over the years, and these are by far the best. Super happy with them. Milk out fast. In addition, when we do the cleanup, which you'll see later, they clean super well. Our somatic cell count since we started using these have been the lowest we've ever had, and we've always had really low counts in our rolling herd average. We've been on dairy herd improvement for oh, 13 years, 12 years, something like that. So we've tracked all that for that long. 
And then I'm accepting the quality. We do that with every cheese batch and are able to then know if our cleaning regimen of both the equipment and the udders is working. So this does going to melt out real pretty quickly. And knowing that, I'll get this one dried off when I think she's about done. I like to try to leave the tea dip on there as long as possible so that talking to their leg touches the tea doesn't contaminate it. And so this show you, you all have to angle these forward more and then uh, pull their udder up a bit. So dry this dough off using us. These are microfiber reusable wipes that one time use and then wash. And we do wash them on a sanitizing cycle on our washing machine. So one side is done on her, pull it off. Keep my eye on the other dough too. Take this one off and then hook this gal up. And then this dough, the ones that milk out quickly are often the ones that let a little bit more down after a few minutes. Down here, one side is almost empty. This is it. You don't want to leave the inflation on there if they're empty because it'll either fall off or it'll work its way up the tea and uh, put some pressure on parts of the udder that shouldn't have that. So that's damaging to the udder tissue. Remove that one. Look at it. It's a little deep here. So you can see they work great on all different sizes. And the milk will tell you if they're comfortable to. Pay attention to that. Some goats misbehave for other reasons, but most of them are telling you something. We give our goats a little tiny bit of sprouted barley while they're up on the stand, but not very much. And then I give a little less to the chubby ones and a little more to the ones that seem like they're getting more milk and are having to keep keeping their weight up. With a Nigerian dwarf, you don't see that very often. So if you hear that slurp, that's because of this other shape, which is why in a goat show, and on linear appraisal, that's penalized. It's not good for hand milking, and it's not good for uh, machine milking. Other than that, she's an exquisite, very dairy dough. So she's done, except for a little hand milking. This side's done. You know, obviously the Nigerian dwarfs are gonna melt out much quicker than the other, other gal. This one's let down a little bit more, but not enough to hook back onto the machine. And you get to where you can usually see when their udders are empty. But you have to know your goat, too. And try it. In the beginning, it's good to just go ahead and see if you can melt somewhere out. Did you see the size of the teats on this Nigerian? This is a purebred. And check this one. And then we're done. Time to get some more goats. Thank you, ladies.